All right, we've got a great show today. Sweet 16, college football spring breakdown, team breakdown. We got Tom Luganbill on here. Oh, we got Thursday trivia, the Booster Club. Man, what an emotional time. It but, is. but yesterday, Blaine, you sparked a raging debate in clue? the office. Mm. Not a raging clue. This is in the heart. Mine's of the pointing place. that way. Yeah, well, mine's pointing this way. <laughs> uh, how do you cut your sandwich? It's an age old question. And I saw this on Twitter. Somebody followed me on Twitter. Yep. Ray, shout out Ray. See, Ray Lofton. Tonight. Ray, you, you, you helped spark this too. Diagonal mm. or in half? Okay. See, I cut mine vertical. <laughs> you cut it like down the middle of the yeah, down the middle. <laughs> I just go straight vertical. Good for you. Um, but uh, wait, taking, on a sub? On a sub? Yes. Or like yeah. on a piece of bread? Sub. Sandwich. Okay. Well, it makes it easier to put the pickle on there. Because wait, David it's, loves pickles. David Stop with the pickles. It. Okay. Stop <laughs> with the pickles. You I love will try Wickles. You, you like? I don't get I it. I just still I the still fact you it. like olives and don't like pickles. I do like olives. To me, that's like uh, like just can't get but like loving nachos? loving women but hating Gal Gadot. Nachos? No. That'd be weird. No. <laughs> nachos. Throw some black olives in there. Dude, I'm fine stop. with it. I'm Why fine would you with ruin it. a great yeah. plate of But nachos. like, you're throwing not, uh, black olives on pizza? Love it. Sausage, black like, olive pizza. The, it's disgusting. The, the sandwich one, well, y'all cut your sandwich? I just eat them whole these days. <laughs> well, look. If, y'all if eat I'm, sandwiches? Yeah. <laughs> well, sandwiches? I just, I get mine, I cut, cut the crust off and <laughs> touch it. Touch yeah. it. Yeah. Massage. I guess diagonal. A diagonal's diagonal. like, diagonal's for the people who like, Park it, reverse in the park. Yeah, well, that's diagonal, me. And that's no, 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 no. They're better than everyone. That's diagonal. That's what it is. Diagonal. Yeah. Diagonal is for privileged kids. Slightly pretentious. Let's be honest. Yeah. Have you ever seen You're a too poor good kid? for the clean hey, cut? Yeah. But it's actually it yeah. makes for an easier bite on the diagonal have, cut. Have you is ever that proven? S- when I don't know if that's proven. Let's be honest. Science. When, science. Hashtag okay. science. When you guys were in school, like you never saw a poor kid pull out a sandwich that was cut diagonal. That is true. That's fine. Most point. of the time, it looks like the sandwich got need, cut with those scissors. You need to that put that like on a shirt. Safe. <laughs> those <laughs> safety you scissors. You never saw a poor kid cut his sandwich diagonally. It's on a shirt walking around. Yeah, never saw, never seen it. New Again. merch drop? New merch drop? New merch drop. Yeah, we oh. can do it. Pinky's up. Pinky's <laughs> up. Yeah. Pinky, pinky's up. <laughs> the Sweet 16 has finally arrived. The New York Jets add a dynamic receiver. And Tom Luganville is going to join us to talk some college football because it never ends, baby. I'm Jay Crane. It's Thirsty Thursday, and get excited. It's Crane & Company. The Sweet 16 is upon us, and while they are still huge underdogs, screw it. Give me FAU to go to the Final Four, because this tournament, who knows? It's already been bananas, so anything is in the realm of possibility. Now, when you look at FAU, this team checks pretty much every box. They have the clutch guard that grabs more buckets than pre-party Cinderella and John L. Davis. They have the tree down low in Vladislav Golden, or Vakaitis as we call him, and their depth has allowed them to be number one in the country in bench scoring. That's how you win games. Now, they run at you in waves, and their ability to have anyone go off at any point makes defending them damn near impossible. But it's not just the offensive side where FAU can be dominant. Pair their stellar offensive numbers with being top 20 in opponent field goal percentage, and that's how this team has made a historic run, with balance. The last factor they have is grit. The Memphis team they played in the first round was on fire, and FAU beat them at their own game. So that's one big dog down. Then, in round two, they faced FDU, who was the ultimate underdog with all the momentum, and FAU was still able to hold them off. See, this team doesn't care about the circumstance or the opponent or how big the moment is. They just play within their system and let gravity take over. The Tennessee team they faced today is tough as hell. And this pace matchup should be outstanding. But for the Vols, I do believe this is the game where Zakai Ziegler will be missed the most. And also, I may have sprinkled $10 on FAU money uh, to win the whole tournament (laughs) to win two grand. So there's also that too. But that's neither here nor there. Let's let's stick to the important stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host, former Michigan quarterback, current father of two. Guy that's just got a good-looking face. Golly, that feels good at... Whatever time it is. Look, I like, I like, you know what? Some people say the best part of waking up is 
Black Rifle coffee in your cup? Mm -hmm. Well, it is, but also a compliment's a great way to start, too. I like to I can't wait. Oh, yeah, I can't right wait. Here. Yeah. Now here we Woo! go with this one. Yeah, can't and then, wait. then to my to my uh, brother Blaine. Yeah. Uh, beat a speech impediment when he was a kid. He God, you're the now. worst. Well, you beat that, though. You're you the beat worst. It. Now you're better you're for it. You're the worst. Especially guys. You're overcoming Especially adversity. You guys. That's fine. Can you not take... Is that not yeah. a compliment? If enjoy I, if that, you and enjoy that coffee this morning. Yeah. If, wait a minute. I don't like that. Yeah. Well, you would choose a woman's way to kill me. Yeah. Well, either, either way, you're dead. Yeah. Well, might as well drink a black rifle. Right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, some great matchups today, guys. This tournament has been absolutely bananas. Uh, Y'all saw it. Y'all saw me put money on FAU before. So FAU, I've, I've, so, you, so that's your horse, huh? I'm riding FAU. I will will them to victory. What's your bet again? I've got, I put $10 on FAU before the tournament started. Mm -hmm. I got proof of that. Shout out DraftKings. You could use Code Booster for great deals. Uh. And I bet ten dollars to win two grand. I've already won a thousand dollars this tournament thanks to Fairley Dickinson. All right. Uh, so now I just need FAU. Let's take care of business tonight. Just keep playing our game. Man, they sure are good. And just think, we are one call timeout away at the end of the Memphis game. Mm. Really, from FAU not making it out of that first and round. And that's why I think they keep going. It's just you, the star. The stars have to align. Like that's that's part of it, especially that, no 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 that tournament. is that's so true. That is part of it in March. The stars aligning. Uh, you got to catch some breaks, and, sure. and that's another good thing about starting with such a tough opponent. Remember that eight nine matchup? That was my favorite matchup coming in because I did I'd flip a coin. You know, you didn't know, and it came down to the wire. Once you get past that, in whatever fashion it is, doesn't matter if it's buzzer beater, turnover at the end, call timeout, whatever. Once you get past that, and then Purdue had already lost. You, you're really feeling yourself going into the Sweet 16. I'm just telling you, this Tennessee team, what they did to Duke, it almost— it, it just, Are you back? It, it wasn't, it wasn't right what they did. Are, yeah, are you are back, you on, back the on the Tennessee train? train? After what they've done to you, you multiple times. Well, here's how I feel just about say it. it, David. What I need to do is look, not pick Tennessee. Look. And then they'll do better. You know, so, this is my home state now. That is but, true. But, so when I picked them last year, they're out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, what I saw them do against Duke— it just was not right, man. But we're keeping it in the SEC. I don't know how we don't sit here and talk about Arkansas. Talk about it. After just beating the reigning national championships in the way they did. When it comes to player and talent, I mean, Arkansas could run with any of them. Must bus in the tournament, that bus doesn't run out of gas, baby. And who they got now? The UConn. I mean, UConn's over the season. The UConn? The, the, over the season ha has been somewhat spotty in certain games. I mean, right, if, D if Devo gets going... Nick Smith Jr. Oh, Devo's gonna get going. And Nick Smith Jr. <laughs> NBA player, and if uh, and if Anthony Black can run the point, how yeah. their tempo needs to be, and not turn the ball over, and they can somewhat not get killed on the boards, yeah. Arkansas can run with anybody this, in this tournament. This I hope this game's close. I think it will be because in the last five minutes, watching Devo Davis versus Hawkins from UConn is there are some elite guard matchups in the next two days. We're gonna get to Bama and San Diego State and them tomorrow. But look at some of these guard matchups. Michigan State, Kansas State. Mm -hmm. Tyson Walker versus Noel? Are you for real? Sign me up for that 10 out of 10 times. Who gets the ball last? That's Who gets to put up the last shot? Because these guys are big shot takers and big shot makers. Then you look at Arkansas and UConn like we just mm -hmm. brought up. Mm -hmm. Devo Davis, old head, putting the team on his back. Hey, guess what? It's me. It's now. It's us. Uh, and Hawkins and some of the guys running around there. Then you look at FAU and Tennessee. Uh, I just mentioned John L. Davis yep. and Vascovi. Girl, stop. You know what's funny? The best matchup might be that last one. I know. UCLA, UCLA, at UCLA you got Tiger Campbell, the kid from Major Pain, running he point. Hawkes, whose whole family's gone to UCLA for the last 400 years. Uh, against Gonzaga, and I know Timmy's not a guard, but you guys got to mention Drew Timmy, but Nolan Hickman, Strother, guys on the outside like that. There are some fantastic matchups from guard play and down low, but this first set of games, uh, and, and I want to go through them real quick before we get to the Booster Club, just to, just to kind of preview. It's Michigan State, Kansas State, mm -hmm. Arkansas, Connecticut, Florida Atlantic, Tennessee, and Gonzaga and UCLA. It's tonight the night where the Zags go home. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's hard for me to pick against UCLA, yeah, man. It is. Um, we talked about some of their injuries leading into the tournament. It seems like they've been able to get past that. It seems yep. like Miami, and um, Miami Houston I know is tomorrow, but I don't know. Th this UCLA-Gonzaga matchup, I'm just so excited to watch all of these. And then Michigan State, Kansas State. I, like I said, I found myself mm -hmm. in the uncomfortable position of having to root for Michigan State for one of these bracket buster challenges that I am. That's what it does to you. You know, look, I'm not happy about it, but cheer on green, make some green. That's how I feel about it. And I'm still, I've done 
done some behind the scenes analysis on where I trusted the signs wrong when I picked Kansas because I'm, I feel like I've let down the movement a little bit. I saw the bird. I picked Kansas because I doubted them last year. Bird. I took Kansas, but to Blaine's point, maybe it was our Kansas. Oh, maybe it was Arkansas. Either that, I and mean, I had to go a step further. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, you got to remember another team in this tournament when you're talking about birds that we're not talking about. What's the, what about Creighton? Creighton, yeah. I mean, Creighton. That's I mean, what I think it is. I think it, you thought it was a Jayhawk, and I'll be damned it was a Blue Jay. Maybe. I mean, Creighton versus a Princeton matchup. Prince, well, I mean, as long as Princeton's in this thing, boy, thought. you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I, I may put a lot of money on Princeton money line tomorrow. Yeah. I don't who's who's what playing the, better? You want, you want me to get the odds on who's, that? Yeah, what's the odds? Who's playing better right now than Princeton? Princeton. And I know I know they don't they don't play until Friday, but uh again, don't try I got him right now. Creighton's a nine and a half point favorite. What's the what's the game? money line? Money line for Princeton's plus three sixty. Woo! Uh money line for Creighton's minus uh four eighty. The over and unders one thirty nine. The thing about Creighton, Creighton just knows who they are. They know who they are. Having Nim backs huge for this. Like huge. they haven't had him in the tournament because asking Trey Alexander to do all that by himself. Trey Alexander needs to be off the ball trying to get open to, to get shots. We know Cockbrenner is is straight out of lost in space down there. Um he's he's a monster. He's been playing well, been really efficient down low. But man, the matchups tomorrow. You so who do y'all have tonight? Who do, who, all right. who, who y'all taking? All Michigan right. State, Kansas State. Who Kansas State. Kansas State. Kansas State. Yep. yep. Keontae Johnson, too. Woo. Man, Florida they're good. Transfer. They're good. I'll take Michigan State. All right. I'll take MSU. Okay. Look at you. You love to see it. Growing. Trying to get, trying to get this bracket. This Growing bracket in front of our eyes. eyes. You got to will it. You got to will There's a will, there's a way. Arkansas, UConn, what are y'all feeling? <laughs> Give me the backs. Give me Sonogo and UConn. Woo. And I got to go Mudsbus. Even though that's not my official. Pig Suey. I am taking Arkansas money line in my bet. Come on, boys. I got to go. Because the odds are so good. Plus 165 yeah, on Arkansas yeah, money line? Come on. Plan. Uh, FAU Tennessee. Give me Tennessee. Give me defense. Tennessee defense. Good, defense. good. Suffocating them. Yeah. Shun the non believers. Give me FAU. Hoot, hoot. Watch me turn my head around and laugh at you. Uh, Gonzaga, UCLA. Who you I, got? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to take UCLA, though. Who you picking, Jake? U- UCLA. UCLA? Yeah. Give me Gonzaga and the boys. Yeah. yeah. Give me Getting Gonzaga the and the boys. The handlebar, Drew Timmy, welcome to the Y. High socks. I'm going to hit on your mom, then drop 15 points. <laughs> double, double. I'm going to hit on your mom, drink one of those little Kool-Aid pouches. Yes, sir. Yeah, double, Kool-Aid double. jammer. Yes, sir. Move to the elite. I'm going to pull yeah. off of my old Ford that still makes way too much noise. Headed back to the crib after five dubs. There you, you go. You love to see it. And feeling great about yourself. Feeling great and about feeling yourself. Feeling great about yourself. But if you want to feel great in general. If you're dragging in the morning, maybe you don't like the type of coffee you have. Well, guess what? Black Rifle Coffee is the Booster Club's coffee. Y'all know what the Booster Club is. It's any fan in the show because everybody's a part of the show. It isn't my show. It isn't Blaine's show. It isn't Cone's show. It's our show with the Booster Club. All right, you can save money and drink America's coffee. You need to go to blackriflecoffee.com. Use our promo code Booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, at checkout for 10% off your purchase and your first coffee club order. Booster Club. Coffee Club, let's make the inside look out the outside and the outside look like the inside. Shout out to the Butabi brothers. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use that promo code Booster for 10% off. You can also find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you. Yeah, they got it like that. Black Rifle Coffee, America's coffee. What do you got, Cone? Already finished Blackbeard's Delight. That thing's gone. On to gunship. When are you, uh, did you get the uh, Fool's Gold? It's, a, it's in the mail. It's in the mail? Yeah. Is it, th- it was five packs too much? No. Ordered five. You packs. only ordered five? You only ordered yeah. five? Come on, dude. First round. Okay. Come on. First well, round. Zero next was to that. Was 10 pork belly tacos enough? But they also have, hey, they it. also have the ready to drink. Uh, I've actually had a couple people reach out to me uh, on these. The ready to drink canned coffee. Really? It contains 200 milligrams of caffeine. It comes in vanilla bomb, salted caramel, Ooh. mocha, and yeah. vanilla caramel. Look. I don't know a ton about a ton, but salted caramel and vanilla caramel, you can sign the kid up for. Even though I'm on my apocalypto diet. Are you still on Two, uh, 200 milligrams of caffeine? Yeah. It's the same amount as my pre-workout, baby. Let's go. Let's get it. I'm drinking a couple of scoops of those and 200 of those. Yeah, I'm, st- I'm still on that. It. I'm, still, I'm still on the, the apocalypto How's diet. it going for you? It's going good, man. It's uh, Again, if anybody doesn't know out there, it's basically where you don't eat and you just run in the woods. You just run away from things. I feel like woods. that could get you in trouble. Well, if you know what woods a you're in. A little bit. I mean, you're in a nice neighborhood. Shirt hey. on, shirt off. It's apocalypto, dude. Shirt off, I got blue paint all over yeah, it. Okay. Like, he's looking good, man. I'm not dude, saying you're looking... Hold diet. on. Hold on. Dude, I'm, not saying you're you're look, I'm not saying you're looking Is bad. This I just don't want thing? you to get hurt. I'm not... Look, well, I'm, we got out of the food chain, dog. I'm not worried about me and the... They should be worried about them. 
in the woods. I know. I, I, they are worried. And so they're going to what? React. And then something bad can happen. Well, good. Then I'll be like the kid from 300. I'll just come back to the house with like a huge wolf coat on. <laughs> he did do that. Yeah. That was a true story. Very true story. Yeah. But there was actually 301 of them. This one dude had one arm that kicked him out of the That's group. That's true. BS. That was yeah. the one. Uh, all right, let's get to the Booster Club. Let's go to Chris E. with a $5 donation. Appreciate it, Chris. Says, bracket group with my friends. Four of us have the championship pick still in it. Oh, yeah. Three people have Houston. I am alone having Texas. Who will come out on I top? Like Texas. Like Texas. I had Texas making to the championship. Like Texas, Texas, Alabama. Got everything. No. That's what I had ri- that's what I had written before I saw that bird on my porch. Golly. Dave, I'm Look, mean, hey, look, hey, look. look, look. You find the animal. The hardest part is not seeing the sign. It's interpreting. It's interpreting I get it. the sign. That's on me. Especially when the, everybody has basically the same mascots. That's on like me. Like a bulldog or a bird or whatever. Like very rarely are you going to see like a rainbow warrior from Hawaii running down the street. Like I'm not talking about like that. You're not going to see like, uh, you know, I I don't know, a, a Gonzaga, you know, the the whatever kind of looking bulldog that is. Is that an English bulldog or American bulldog? Uh, English. I English think. bulldog. I'm almost mean, positive. It's you see those, but like they're, they're so generic, it's hard to like wade through. Like if I'm, if so I'm picking the bulldogs or the tigers, you know, anything like that. But we'll see. It's interpreting the signs. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Let's go to Sammy Way. This is the way. Hashtag Ask Crane and Company. Can this be the year that UCLA or Gonzaga can win it? Both have been under the radar and have been playing good basketball. Much love. From Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, Albuquerque, Breaking Bad. Let's get it. Um, anybody can win this tournament. Yeah. That's what you know. What I learned over the first weekend. Anybody can win this thing. Uh, it's it's that tight, which I like. How ironic would it be? And I've been the person up here that's given given Gonzaga the most hell because I think they're a major that plays in a mid major conference and they still haven't won the whole thing yet. They get treated like a blue blood. I know Mark Few does incredible in the NCAA tournament, and and I'm not trying to downplay that, and that's a huge deal. But winning the big thing, or the big one, gets you all the big things. How ironic would it be if the year that Gonzaga actually wins it was probably not even a top three team that Mark Few That would be interesting. And I feel similarly about UCLA. I didn't think UCLA could lose Johnny Juzang and get better. Yeah. Yeah, I know Tiger Campbell was coming back and Hawkins. And then they lose Jalen Clark. Exactly. And now they just, they keep rolling. They keep rolling. I mean, despite that that loss to Arizona in the Pac-12 championship, they have been on a hot streak. Well, well, and, and we always talk about teams in any sport knowing who they are. And it, it's it's a parallel to life, right? It, it's You don't feel insecure when you know who you are. Like when you go places. Like or there's, there's critical moments. Are, are moments in life where you have to perform under pressure. It's amazing how much easier it is to perform under pressure in life or in sports when you know who you are and know how to react. I think that's what this UCLA team is. I think that's what these teams that have success, it's it's not about what moment you're caught in. It's about having the confidence in what you've done to this point to know it's gonna work. Because what gives you more confidence than having a plan that you know is going to work if you execute it the way that you should? Not only through a coach telling you that, but through experience, right? I call it the unteachable intangible Hmm. experience. And once you realize who you are, it's amazing the level of confidence and almost calm in the choppiest of moments. I I really feel like that's what this UCLA team is. All right, we got a guy hurt. That's fine. We know who we are. Like, and, and you can't get everybody hurt at the end of the day. You got to catch breaks like we mentioned. But I think that's one of the saving graces of a team like a UCLA. Or even like an FAU, you do know who you are. It doesn't matter if it's Memphis. It doesn't matter if it's the Lakers or if it's FDU. We're going to play this way, whether the game's tight. We're going to play this way, whether the game's a blowout. And I think that instills confidence. I really believe that. All right, let's go to Travis Elrod. What up, Travis? He wants to know, if you are the Texas AD, do you keep Rodney Terry? I need to see more. I need to see more. Here's the thing. You get to the Elite Eight. Yeah, we'll run it back. Okay, so that's your that's yeah that, that's that, that, that's that's where I'm at. Because again, who's out there right now? Luke Patino just got scooped up. Mm-hmm. Chris Beard already got scooped up. We know he's not coming back <laughs> to Texas after that crazy craziness. I think Rodney Terry has shown you. Yeah, is the team good? Yeah, they're really good. But you can fall off a cliff. There's been great teams that have fallen off cliffs because some adversity happened to a coach or something like that. I think Rodney Terry has shown an unbelievable job of being able to maintain talented players' focus. 
And that's really the job of a coach outside of recruiting and the stuff you do off the court, maintaining their focus on the court mm -hmm. and doing the things they need to do. And it's easier with an older team, but there's some young guys on this one. Uh, and, and they are uber talented. If they win this one, I think Rodney Terry needs to keep his job. Because again, right now, who are you going to go get? Mm -hmm. Who's it going to be? You can go make a run at Nate Oates? I think Rodney Terry will be the head coach at Texas. I think so too. Yeah, and he's look, he's been an assistant for he's recruit, he's, done a, he's a hell of a recruiter. Like it's I, I don't think Texas would be wrong. Sometimes things that are meant to happen happen. He's been there a while too, right? Yeah, That's man. Ronnie Terry's been, been there a long time. The block, man. This this so, this isn't his first rodeo. He's, he's handled it really well. You watch the way those guys play, they play unbelievably hard. Uh, so I think Rodney Terry, if he makes the Elite Eight, will definitely be, but I think most likely he is gonna be. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Mike RFF. It is a lifestyle. He wants to know what would be the most surprising March Madness championship? What would be the most entertaining matchup? Out of what's left? Out of what's left. I mean, Princeton, of course. I, I think, yeah, I, when you look at, at what would be the most shocking, uh, you got to look at the highest seed. So Princeton, obviously, coming out uh, of, of their side. And then on the other side, Miami? man. I you mean, know, the lowest seed would be Arkansas, but Miami might actually be a better pick just because O'Meara, they, they already are not a very long team, right? Yeah. They're, they're guard heavy. But then the, your tallest guy, your number one rebounder, O'Meara, was supposed to be injured before the tournament started. He's bounding around the court, you know. Now like, he's got a week to rest and exactly. get that, get that so thing that back right. I agree with you. I, I think the most, the most, you know, underdog matchup per se, you just take the, the lower seeds, Princeton and, and then Arkansas. But the best matchup, man, I, t I tell you what, uh, the, more I look, the more I look at it, I, I really think maybe an Alabama versus Miami. Um, but <laughs> Alabama-Arkansas would be a hell of a matchup too. I'll tell you another one. Take Princeton out of it from that left side of the bracket that has the east and the south. Michigan State. You know, Michigan Izzo. State, I mean, not that, I mean, Michigan State's always great. Tom Izzo is an elite basketball coach, but they didn't, like we said, who was the second best team in the Big Ten? We didn't really know who it was behind Purdue. We thought maybe it was Indiana. All those teams are out of it now. Illinois, out of it now. Michigan State keeps plugging along, getting hot at the right time. That would be a seven seed to make the championship that would be very surprising and also fun. I would love to see an Alabama-Texas matchup in the championship. And that may happen. Anytime you get these two groups together, like good oh, things yeah. start happening. The dark you know energy you talk about. There's a lot. You want to know what makes dark matter? It's hate. Alabama and He's, Texas fans. After what happened to Colt McCoy, there's a lot of. Well, Tony Colt you McCoy, that. you mean Quinn Ewers? And Quinn, uh, that's uh, funny you say because I have. And when we do our college football breakdown, that's what I'm going to be talking about. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it goes deep with these teams for man. sure. Okay, let's go to um, Sean Pennison. He wants to know more likely to get to the Final Four. It's kind of easy, easy answer. Gonzaga, or Princeton. Princeton's going to have to go through Bama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that reason, I'm going to say Gonzaga. I mean, look, Gonzaga's got a better team, but who is playing better than Princeton? If you actually watch the games, Princeton just out efficiency you, and they shoot well. But like, they, they, uh, they, are they the biggest, most athletic team? No, but I'm just, I'm a huge fan of Alec Pierce's little brother, the yeah. wide receiver for the Colts. <laughs> All right, let's go to Laura the, the Brown. She's ripping more nets than a, than a fish with knives on it. She wants to know, would Kansas have played differently if Bill Self had been coaching? I was asking that same question yeah. to myself. I don't I know. I mean, what, what, what it, differently as in, like, you know, more trustworthy of what's getting called later in the game? I well, think they were what, up, right? Didn't they have yeah, a double Yeah, they were up. Ar Arkansas just out-scrapped them. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. They missed free throws down the stretch. Yeah, and, and you did miss free throws. They missed free throws. Jalen Wilson missed free throws down the stretch. So uh, it's, it's a little bit of both. No, I don't think so. I think Arkansas won that game. I don't think it was because of the K Kansas's coaching. I think they outplayed them in the last eight to 10 minutes of that game, and they took it. Devo Davis and them decided, we're not going home. I'm not ready for this ride to end. I want to see Eric Musselman take his shirt off. Let's win the game. And Grady Dick disappeared at the end of that game, and he Arkansas did. had a guy. You always need a guy. Like we said, when your best players aren't playing at their best, who's going to step up? Yep. Devo Davis said, give it to me. Give yeah. the ball Smith to me. Smith Jr. wasn't super effective. No. Anthony Black wasn't super effective. But like effective. even Ricky Council was hitting free throws down the stretch. Like they did what they needed to do to win the basketball game. They did. All right, a couple more. I was going to Electric Grid. He said, uh, we haven't talked about this, and I saw this. Brandon Miller got snubbed of the finalists for the Naismith Award. One even in the four finalists. <sighs> yeah, I, I think I that. I get it. I, 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 do, I do too. I think that award, and, and I want to look it up because I want to make sure I'm not, I'm not confusing this with the Wooden Award, but I, I believe there is a character deal in there. Um, 
Now, if we were talking about just, and again, I fact check me on that. If we're going to talk about, and this, nobody's saying Brandon Miller needs to be in jail. And uh, there was stuff that came out about the timeline that, that wasn't uh, told at first. But with all that went on, in that, if that award was just purely, purely basketball ability, all right, that's the draft. That's what the NBA draft. That's what that is. Now, it is biased, but that's what that is. If it was based on just pure basketball ability with nothing else, then yes, this would be BS. Brandon Miller's the top four player in the country. All right, but more goes into it than that, okay? It's, it's an award that involves character as well. I think the Wooden Award does too. Um, but like I said, fact check me on that. So I'm not shocked by that uh, or surprised by that. They just, it seems... They didn't want to get involved in in that situation. I understand it. I yeah. hate it. I hate it for the kid. Uh, he, he's going to be the first college basketball player taken in the draft. I think he's going to have a great NBA career. He has all the attributes that you want. He may leave college as a national champion. Mm-hmm. You know, they're rolling right now. But I do understand, you know, an award presentation or award ceremony, like not wanting to necessarily dive into those waters. Just like if this was the same situation with the Heisman Trophy yep. and this happened, you probably wouldn't be awarded the, uh, the trophy. That's exactly right. I was going to Charles Moore. He says, was Purdue really the best team in the Big Ten? Sure, they had the best record, but is that all we're going on? Well, who are you taking over, Indiana? I mean, you can't say Michigan. You can't say Ohio State. What was their record? What was the Purdue question versus again? Indiana? Like, who was, who was Purdue really the, the best, best team in the Big, Big Ten? Ten? They were 29-5, and five, I believe. Mm-hmm. They were 29-5. and five. Um, But again, some of the, the losses they had— they. They lost twice to Indiana. That much I know. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, Jackson Davis had double doubles both those games. I mm-hmm. think. Well, we've. I, I think we got to understand too. When, when you're comparing one loss in a tournament compared to a regular season, like that's a body of work versus losing one time. You can lose a couple conference games and still be the best team in the conference. So it's it's a great question. But all right, let's get to some college football. Let's do it. All right. What teams you guys got today? I'm going Auburn. I'm rolling with the Oregon. Okay. Do you want to start us off? Uh, you want me to start us off? I started yeah. off yesterday. You want me to go again today? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Beautiful. When we talk about teams, any teams in college, what do we got to start with? Quarterback. The quarterback, baby. And guess who Oregon's got returning his focus? He's, he's having fun. Might be a dark horse for a Heisman. Since just, they haven't had this luxury since the Justin Herbert days. True. Walking to a spring, knowing who your starting guy is at quarterback. But there's going to be some changes. There's going to be a lot of holes that need to get filled. Oregon's going to have four offensive linemen at their pro day from last year's team. Um, and you come back, you're going to have a new offensive coordinator. I believe it's Will Stein. You lose Dillingham. He's going to Arizona State. Not only do you lose that, your receiver room, you have some pieces, but it's at flux right now. Running back room is going to be extremely good, and you got in the portal and did some good things. Let's switch over to the defense. You lose Christian Gonzalez. First-round pick. And, I mean, the, the, this defense now, it wasn't phenomenal last year. I believe it ranked 75th in uh, yards and 77th in points allowed. Um, you lose your best DN, best pass rusher. Right, you lose Noel Sewell, a middle linebacker. Mm-hmm. You lose a lot of key guys, but what did you do? You got in the portal, right? You got a linebacker from Iowa, right? You got a DN from South Carolina. Any edge guy you get from the SEC, buddy, you're probably in good hands. Yeah, it's a good decision. Um, you got a, a cornerback in Kyrie Jackson, who I'm telling you, who I coached when he played a little bit of receiver before he moved to DB. The kid's an absolute. And freak. people, people forget he he got to. It was a hell of a play by Georgia in the national championship mm-hmm. game. Kyrie was the Alabama DB that got beat. But if you really watch it, Kyrie, is, he's an NFL player. I mean, he uh, he's legitimately 6'3". Yep. I would say a long run. And the thing about coming from receiver for the defensive back, you have what? You have ball skills. And a lot of that's hard for defensive back. There's a reason they play defensive back, not receiver, because they can't catch. All right? I know, Jake, I'm not trying to hurt you or anything, but I know that's the reason why, realistically. We all want to play receiver deep down. If you can't catch, you go play DB. But the big thing when it comes to this offense, you're averaging 500 yards a game last year, right? You're dropping 40 points a game, right? But you're losing so much. So it's so huge for these guys to have a fifth-year senior and returning and Bo Nix. I want to see. I mean, you get you sign a five-star offensive lineman who's probably going to have to come in to start. You have one guy with a total of, I think, seven starts after coming into injury last year. You're going to have to fix a lot of holes up front. And at the end of the day, if you play good defense in the Pac-12, not great, you'll have a chance to play with the championship the way the offense are running out here. So it's a new Will Stein era. Let's see how it goes. But if you're the Oregon Ducks, a lot of things looking up. You just have to fill holes. And that defense don't have to be great, right? But you have to be good. But it's good they're walking in with a fifth-year senior in boat next. Right. 
I didn't realize Oregon has to go to Texas Tech on September 9th. That's not fun. Their schedule's not easy next year. I mean, you go to Texas Tech, you go to Washington, you go to Utah, you... That, that's tough. You do get USC at home. You get Oregon State at home, who mm. we'll see how, how they are with DJU. DJ. Uh, I mean, that's, that's not a walk in the park, man, by any stretch of the imagination with what the Pac-12 has coming back at quarterback. Uh, so, no, that's, that, that's interesting. I mean, even to God, it's just, it's such a bittersweet feeling, right, to see four offensive linemen at Pro Day that are all going to get drafted. It's like, wow, we're doing really good. Damn it. Yeah. It's like, They're all gone. You guys Y'all return your senior at right guard, which is going to be big. But anytime you lose a center, especially guys who go to the NFL, you're like, man. Yeah. You sure you don't want to come back? Oregon, D- Dan Lanning, year two. I mean, I, I think Dan's going to do a hell of a job. He already is. All right, I got Auburn. All right. Ooh. Going back. We're going home, y'all. How are they looking? Can't wait for this. A lot better than what they did. Auburn struggled before Hugh Freeze got there because they weren't good enough on the offensive line. Really, you know, you could the defensive line last year was was decent, but the offensive line has been awful at Auburn. So what does Hugh Freeze do? He goes out and gets some guys that can do it. Uh, the first unit that ran out there was Robbie Ashford at quarterback with Jarquez Hunter in the backfield. I'm going to get to Robbie Ashford in a second. But the offensive line included Tulsa transfer Dylan Wade at left tackle, freshman Connor Lou at left guard, ECU transfer Avery Jones at center, who's a hell of a player, Jeremiah Wright at right guard, and Western Kentucky transfer Gunnar Britton at right tackle. You got the FAU transfer Rivaldo Fairweather, who's at tight end, who everybody is freaking out about. They think he's going to be a big-time player. This is going to come down to how good Auburn is up front. All right? These guys that transferred in, you are already better than what you were last year. You've already stepped up. Auburn's offensive line was pathetic last year. Awful. Those guys need to go, get out, and be gone. The recruiting before that was a joke. These guys can actually play. Then you look outside. Coy Moore's a guy that transferred from LSU that can do some things. Is he elite? I don't think so. But then Tarvarish Dawson Jr., remember that name. This kid is a freak of nature. They've had a couple injuries. But if Robbie Ashford at quarterback, and, and we know how important the quarterback position is. Last year, that Bama game, as an Auburn fan, gave me hope with Robbie Ashford throwing the ball. I'm a firm believer in if you can do something once, you can do it again especially if you do it in the biggest stage on the road in the Iron Bowl. It wasn't like you went out there and threw it good against Louisiana Tech. You went out there against an Alabama team on the road with an offensive line that's absolute garbage and was able to, to, to do your thing, including running the ball well. He's an elite runner. Not a good runner, not a great runner. An elite runner. He can score from 90 yards out. He can score from nine yards out. He reminds me a lot of Jaden Daniels. Now, when it comes down to to accuracy, and this is a point I made the other day, people keep saying, you need to be more accurate. You need to be more accurate. Well, yes. What helps with accuracy? Repetition throwing, duh, but making good decisions. When you make good decisions, you throw to people that are open. When you throw to people that are open, it's easier to get completions, and it's easier to throw than the ball. You know this better than anybody, Dave, but it's a lot easier to throw to an open receiver than it is to somebody who's covered. So if Robbie Ashford, he doesn't have to be Joe Montana throwing the ball, with the system they're going to run, even with Philip Montgomery, the old Tulsa coach, who's now the offensive coordinator, it's still going to be a version of what Hugh Freeze, Freeze typically runs, which means the quarterback run game is going to be very, very involved in what they do because it puts pressure on defenses at multiple levels. If they utilize him the way that I think Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery will be able to, and he improves his decision-making by a lot, which will improve his accuracy by a little, this Auburn team can, can really do some damage if that offensive line's pretty good. It's going to come down, in my opinion, to the receiver room. Which receivers are going to be able to step up and go get 50-50 balls, turn them into 70-30 balls? Yep. You have guys that you don't have to drive 9, 10, 11, 12 plays to go score. Why does Tennessee score so many points? They score in five plays. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. How, there, a lot less goes wrong when you score in less plays. It's amazing how that works out. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you've got some, some guys up front, Jeffrey Mba, the, the, the Frenchman, uh, the, the transfer, also in the band, Hanson. Um, <laughs> I think he's going to be able to do some things. I'm not worried about the defense with the transfers you have. Uh, the Tolan kid from LSU I like a lot as well. I'm looking at that offense, and I trust the offensive line. It's going to come down to Robbie, because TJ Finley can't do it. 
If TJ Finley's a starting quarterback at Auburn, you might as well put it in an envelope and mail that stuff to six and six town. Mm. All right, because that's what you're getting. He sh- when, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And with TJ Finley, whether it's at LSU, whether it's Auburn, we know who you are, and it's not good enough. So to me, it's got to be Robbie Ashford, or you got to try and grab somebody from the portal after spring at quarterback. But if Robbie can get it right, he can be nasty. I want to talk about the Texas Longhorns. Ooh. I think this will be the most pivotal season for Texas football in the past decade. Steve really? Sarkeesian enters year three. Uh, since Mac Brown's 16 year uh, ten- tenure with the Longhorns, you had uh, Charlie Strong last three seasons, okay, and Tom Herman lasted four seasons. Mm-hmm. So Steve Sarkeesian enters year three here. And, and, and what's important here, eight and five last season, they haven't won the Big 12 since that 2009 championship season against Alabama, okay? But Oklahoma's won it eight times, I believe, won the Big 12. And now this team is going to be moving to the SEC in 2024. You know Texas wants to win the Big 12 before they jump ship to another conference. Steve Sarkeesian returns. Quinn Ewers at quarterback. We know about that. One of the highest rated recruits we've seen in the history of, of, of high school football coming out. Transfers in from OSU, has an elite first half against Alabama last year, goes down with an injury. He's coming back, and now you add Arch Manning into that, which I'm hearing Arch Manning is taking second string reps right now in spring practice due to an ankle injury with the other quarterback, Malik Murphy. So Arch Manning is already getting, uh, you know, some, some working big on time, those handoff and play action. Some baby. big time reps. Now we know what Texas is losing in B. John Robinson. He's going to be the for- first running back taken in, in this year's draft, as he should be. One of the most elite playmakers in the country. But they have Jonathan Brooks returning, they have Jane Blue returning, and they have an ESPN 300 freshman in Cedric Baxter Jr., who I think can be an elite playmaker at the running back position. But more importantly, they're returning five starters on the offensive line. Huge. Like, that is that is big time. Now, two of those guys are are out for spring practice or at least yeah, multiple practices. But if you have experience, if you have game experience at the offensive line, you can get by missing a few uh, uh, practices in, in, in spring. A.D. Mitchell transfers in from Georgia. Did, wide that receiver. shocked me. Big time, big time transfer right there. Uh, now, Texas overall is ranked 35th in the transfer portal, but you get A.D. Mitchell. And then this uh, this kid, Isaiah Nayer, is an elusive wide receiver who they think could do some Percy Harvin type things. You know, mm. Steve Sarkeesian getting the slot, uh, working like Damn, that. Percy? On the defensive side of the ball, the defense returns a lot of experience and they have this big time uh, breakout potential, I think is what could be cool for Texas. Because that's what they've really been needing to, to set the tone on that side side of the football. For sure. Offense had uh, a problem. Yeah. Jalen uh, Catalan is a safety transfer. Arkansas came in well. from Arkansas. Now, he's going to miss a few practices in healthy. spring as well to try and get healthy. Um, and then cornerback Gavin Holmes is coming in from Wake Forest. So, on the defensive side of the ball, but here's what's interesting, boys. Texas is going to have to go to Alabama. Yeah. To Alabama week two. And then you also go to Baylor and you go to TCU. Man, it's, can, I, this transfer portal stuff just blows my mind. Can you imagine... Like transferring from Arkansas to Texas after you were on the team that beat the hell out of Texas at Arkansas. Like I, I just I, I don't know. I I couldn't transfer to I don't yeah, I don't think we could ever understand it. Yeah. To be honest. I don't think we you know who Bama's returning though? Nick Saban. Yeah. Yeah. And you think the, you think this is gonna be another game with fourteen penalties, buddy. No, yeah. Th- they'll Good be luck. they'll be straight laced well, like, as like, like, full metal jacket. That Texas team, like, what did they end up? Like eight and five? Eight so and five last season. Eight, eight and five. And like, they're like a couple quarters away, a couple ball bouncing a different way, maybe a 10 and three season. For sure. Lost or, by or, seven or, to or, Washington yeah. in the bowl game. Barely lost at home against Alabama. But you, that 2009 season when they lost mm-hmm. to Alabama in the Colt McCoy, Texas has only won 10 games once since then. Mm. They once didn't just break Colt McCoy. Yeah, enjoy this season. Yeah. He's about to get on, off the field. Come on over. Come like on Steve Sarkeesian, Steve Sarkeesian <laughs> has to use this season as a springboard. Well, it's this. because, and I know that any rational person knows that Texas isn't running from the Big Twelve. You don't, you don't run away from a snake to go fight Godzilla. Like yeah. that's not how that works. But if you don't win it, people like if, people will say, "Oh, well, you're running away from the running away from the Big Twelve because you can't win it." Even though that argument just is absolute, absolutely terrible. But you want to make a good last impression, right? Mm-hmm. You just want to make a good first impression. Mm-hmm. I want to leave you with that last impression. You know, lean in, nice, cute yeah. kiss. Let's no one wants a weird. bad breakup. Dangerous, and all, but, yeah. all, but also safe. We're too old for this. And yeah. TCU's going to lose Max Duggan. 
All right, you beat Oklahoma last year, forty-nine to nothing. Right. Yeah, no slaughtering. Benable's still trying to figure it out up there in Norman. So, I don't know, boys. You think Texas can win the Big Twelve this year? Yeah, look, I sure. think with Texas resources and and the personnel they have, I mean, I think they're always a threat. But uh, to me, a lot of it, and, and Blaine alluded to it, it's staying healthy. I'll tell you too, this basketball team. If this basketball team could go on a big run in the NCAA tournament, you know, past the Sweet Sixteen. That could build some momentum there. Lead in into it, yeah, because you don't want to be the, so. the major sport on campus that lets everybody down. Exactly. Embarrassment is one of the biggest motivators of all time. If the basketball team does well here, like they, they have championship potential. The baseball team's looking really good. If the baseball team does well, that would at least give some confidence that, you know what, we're still Texas, man. Yeah. We're Texas. We can win this thing. For sure. I mean, look, you've got the biggest state up. Which state's bigger, California or Texas? In terms of population or land size? Just so- land size. Texas. Gotta be California. Gotta right? be California, right? I think so. I'll look it up. It's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Uh, I tell you what else is a good question. Let's say you're a podcaster out there. You're somebody out there who's trying to find a way to sell your product online. You need to turn to the GOAT of product sales in the greatest of all time sales team with Shopify. All right, they're the all-in-one commerce platform for starting, running, and growing your business. You have a question about merch? This is the answer. And when you hear this beautiful, delicious sound, that means you're getting richer. <laughs> so much your name should be Richard, all right? Uh, you can customize your online store to your brand, discover new customers, and build the relationships that create die-hard fans. You want loyalty. Shopify helps you manage inventory, track payments, and view real-time business insights from a single dashboard. It's really, really easy. You don't have to be Mark Cuban to figure this thing out. They've built the tools you need so that you can focus on building your business. They also have 24-7 support and free on-demand business courses. Shopify is in your corner every step of the way. And you can sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash crane. All right, now crane spelled C-R-A-I-N. All right, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash crane to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash crane. Hit that button. Here we go. God. One it's more a, time, great sound. It's, it's so easy. Like, And again, y- y'all know we come in here, we read ads, and you're like, oh, well, it's how you pay the bills. We don't read stuff that we don't believe in the product. Mm, like, like, as somebody who started a, a podcast from nothing, like, the, the, just the idea of me trying to sell things like, it was hard enough for me just to get it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yeah. All right, that was the hardest part, let alone that. So if you feel overwhelmed, because I know that feeling, if you feel like you have nowhere else to turn to be able to do it, you need to check out Shopify. And I'm telling you, shopify.com slash crane, C-R-A-I-N. It is a fantastic tool, uh, and it'll help you get where you want to go fast. Love it, man. Quick fact check here. We were wrong. California, 155,000 square miles. This is according to USA Today. Texas, 261,000 square miles. We, and we, even, we. And even that, oh, yeah. even like, that, half the size of Alaska. There yeah. you go. Alaska's Alaska, number one. 586,000 square yeah. miles. I don't count. By the way, when we did that trivia question the other day, and we said Maine was the only state that hadn't sent a team to the NCAA tournament. Has Alaska sent a team to the NCAA tournament? I'm on it. Like, can we really count Alaska, though? Do they have a team? I mean, yeah, the the JT Thor. Yeah, t- yeah, the Anchorage. It's freezings. If they have a team, look, I'd rock an Alaska jersey. Hey, two of those states, Alaska and Maine, have never sent a team to the okay, NCAA. Okay, so Alaska, Alaska is one. doesn't have a Division One okay, school. Okay, well that doesn't count. While yeah. Maine's men basketball team has not reached March, March Madness in its ninety three season. Yeah, okay, you don't have a team, you can't qualify yeah. for the. You know, look, you're not going to play. You know, Girl Scout Troop D fourteen. Well, well, they have damn you, Bernice. They have tranquilizer. Beaver tranquilizer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what have you guys tested positive for beaver tranquilizers? Bernice, man, you can't trust her. You can't trust her. Right. Isn't that what you're taking? Something like that. Nice. I'm nice. getting there. I'm getting sweet, there. sweet. <laughs> All right, let's get to the uh, let's go uh, booster club real quick. I'm gonna get some rapid fire for uh, you. the DGD podcast five dollar donation. He DGD, says, what's up? What's, man? what's up, man? He says, what's causing all this? Woo pig. Look, hashtag believe. Yeah. Right, let's go to Maxwell Irwin with a five dollar donation. Good morning, fellas. Good morning to you, Max. Max. Um, yeah. getting super jacked and pale this morning. Ooh. Look, I'm fine with that too. Just don't go in the sun. It's a twilight situation. I'm thinking that the coach should not take a QB in the draft. What are your thoughts? Ah, uh, not take a quarterback. I, well, I mean, he. What do you mean? Do you get Will Levis? Unless yeah. you want to be so bad that I mean, you get a top two pick next year. Look, hold on, hold on. Two quarterbacks. <laughs> two dragons. <laughs> Um, 
Maxwell, I'm gonna need you to explain to me your thinking a little bit more because what what he he gonna get out of free agency? Y'all can go get Jameis Winston, Lamar Jackson. If you're the Panthers. Uh, okay, hold on. If you're the hold Panthers. On, hold on. If you're now. the Panthers. I heard they're shopping Matt Corral. Look, are you okay? What's I'm your boy? fine. You're the Panthers. With Shopify. Are you trading that first pick for Here's, Lamar Jackson? No, 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 no. He. No. Ooh. You can't do it because you already traded. What for do you it. mean you can't do it? You, you asked me to do it. You We're going to trade do a it. trade for a trade. Yeah. You I'm not tra- saying you can't do it within the rules. I'm okay. Saying it doesn't make sense. Like, well, if l- let me ask you this. Lamar Jackson would be the number. If people knew now about Lamar Jackson and he was in this draft, he'd be the number one pick. Right this second or with no, 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 him right back this in second. The day. If you knew, because this is the real terms of the deal. If you had the, if they said, all right, Jake, your your team's drafting first. You have the first overall pick. All right, you can take a college quarterback or Lamar Jackson right now. In, that's in interesting. Time. That's I'm it. taking Lamar Jackson. You're the Colts at three. If that's a possibility. That, are you trading that pick and maybe a couple others? You're at Lamar four, Jackson. Though. Four, excuse, excuse me. They're at four. Excuse me. Well, look, You're it makes four. a big difference if you, think the, if you think the first you two quarterbacks house, are going to be C.J. Stroud somewhere. and Bryce Young. Ernie Palmer. You think the Cardinals at three will go defense. Yeah, yeah right? for sure. You have to think that. So the Colts are sitting there at four. Again, unless you're just trying to tank for a, a quarterback next season, and that's a dangerous game. I heard the, the Dolphins tanking for Tua for years, right? Ugh, yeah. That... <laughs> That hurts. Even that went to five. He wouldn't yeah. pick five because I mean, Joe Burrow freaked out. Would you be more, I mean, at the end of the day, like you, when you get to four and you're the Colts, the options are what? It's Will Levis I know. or Anthony Richardson. That's why, that's <laughs> why it's interesting. That's right? why it's so if I could give up that four spot, and you're going to have to give something else up, obviously, to get Lamar Jackson, buddy, get on the phone. Yeah. I'm Kevin Costner in this thing. Yeah. Get over here, Lamar. Jonathan Taylor. Offensive line, we'll figure it out. But couldn't the Panthers have already done that if that's who they wanted without going and already making a trade with the Bears? Like, this tr- this number one pick has already well, been traded. Well, like, the, the thing is, I think also we, we got to talk about the money part. I mean, if you're going to make that trade, what's Lamar going to accept from a money standpoint? Yeah. I mean, well, they already franchise tagged him, too, but we know it's not exclusive. So, but I, I, I would much rather have, this is why the transfer portal in college football is free agency. Because it's a proven commodity versus a projected commodity. I will always take the proven commodity given that so opportunity. That's but the money, the money, I think, is where Well, the- two things. Remember, the Ravens non-exclusive franchise tagged him. So if the Panthers want to sign him, they could do that today, yeah. but they would owe two first-round picks. Now I guess one of those would be the number so one overall th- pick. Th- but why, when you could have traded the number nine pick instead of which you've already traded so many other picks to get to number one? You know what I mean? Like, you've already given up a lot. Well, I Uh, mean, I guess you could. I mean, it's going to be two first-rounders, obviously, but there's going to be more. Yeah. The most interesting part, though, is what Jake said about Lamar Jackson. I think we have to start admitting that the best football days for Lamar Jackson could be behind him. Maybe not, but could be. Would you still take him, even knowing he may not throw for 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns again, or take a chance on a rookie like a Bryce Young or a C.J. Stroud? I think it's a— I think it's— it's a, well, well, it's it's like this. Would you feel? Do you feel better about going and, and sitting at the roulette table and putting fifty dollars on black, fifty dollars on red, or fifty dollars on green? I'd probably take Lamar Jackson and hope I could get four. Songs. I mean, what do you there feel you better go. about Lamar's ankle or Bryce's shoulder? I would probably take Lamar Jackson and hope he would stay healthy for three or four seasons. Yeah, I'm just playing the numbers, and it's I think numbers Colts and the Colts, the uh, the Colts offense. Yeah, let's and the uh, offense is different system. Yeah, it's that's true. I just want to see Lamar Jackson surrounded by weapons. That, that's what I want to see. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's get to rapid fire. All right, rapid fire. Let's stay in the NFL. Big Ben Roethlisberger says he was approached by the 49ers last year to come out of retirement. We heard a little bit of this with um, with Philip Rivers. If the 49ers, I know Brock Purdy performed really well down the stretch, an unfortunate injury in the NFC Championship game. So, it's, look, it, he, he could possibly have willed that team to, to, to that victory and played in the Super Bowl. But if the 49ers go get Big Ben at that time, when he was kind of, you know, later part of his career, he'd already retired, would the 49ers have made the Super Bowl? No. I, did, did everybody forget, like, how Ben Roethlisberger looked at the end? He was, like, he was not it, good. He, this man could barely move. Like, you want to know why Ben Roethlisberger survived as long as he did at the end. It's because he's so humongous, he could stay up there with two guys on him and throw the ball yes. away. Like, Ben Roethlisberger's body at the end just looked like it was done. Like, we talk about, oh, it's amazing how Tom Brady looks, like, at this age and doing mm-hmm. this. Ben Roethlisberger is not Tom Brady, all right? They're they very different players. I know that's somewhat obvious, but Roethlisberger's body at the end of his career, 
compared to what Tom Brady's is, is night and day. I don't think Ben Roethlisberger, I don't think they make hyperbaric chambers big enough to fit Ben Roethlisberger in them. <laughs> All right? Speaking of burgers, y'all are making me hungry now. Um, I think Ben is done. I think his body is done. Once your body is done, you're done. Like, it, it, everybody has an expiration date. All right, so what are you going to do? Sit in there and throw bubbles and and yeah. and slants and things? Brock Purdy can do that. Let's let, let's also understand, and I give Brock Purdy a little bit of hell for going back out there after that injury just to hand the ball off, but Brock Purdy lost one game with the Niners, mm-hmm. and that was the NFC Championship game after he had to had basically tore his UCL. Like, the man is... Basically, he's still undefeated, let's be honest, when he's played a full game. Now, do I think Brock Purdy is, is going to be the greatest quarterback of all time? But no. But I tell you what, when your ass goes in there and you win and you win in big moments, I'm going to stick you back out there because to me, as a coach, how the hell can I ever talk about accountability or the best player plays when my starting quarterback goes, I don't care if he's Mr. Irrelevant or a, or a 30-foot tall elephant. If you go out there and you win, like Coach Rick Vice said, one of the best coaches in Division Three. I don't care who you are, what you look like, wait, who you pray to, or what ocean you swim out of. It doesn't matter. The best player plays. I agree with what you're saying. One interesting comparison, though, is the Peyton Manning year in Denver when he was not what he used to be, but they had a what? Elite defense, Mm -hmm. and they won the Super Bowl, and Peyton Manning was having trouble throwing out routes that year. I just wonder if you had a quarterback in there, someone like Big Ben or even uh, Phillip Rivers, Mm -hmm. who just doesn't get hurt in that game because of how elite the 49ers defense was, could they have been able to maybe get past Philadelphia and possibly beat the Chiefs? Well, I think it would have been great for the 49ers to have him in, in that room. Right at the end of the day, what you put out there, well, I believe was it, they barely had a quarterback on the roster. You're not asking Big Ben, especially that offensive line. I know the Eagles kind of ran around him a little bit, but with that offensive line, you're not asking Big Ben to do Big Ben things anymore, break three tackles, find someone 50 yards down the field, but just run the offense, right? And half, half the things the 49ers did was get Debo Samuel in the flat. Uh, Brandon Ayuk was one of the hardest guys to guard one-on-one. So I think Big Ben could have taken the 49ers deeper than obviously what they had on the back of quarterback position. But I don't know if ben, ben, Big Ben's coming back to be a backup, hmm. right? I don't know if I could do that legacy-wise. That would be so tough for me after all I've done, I mean, to come back and be a backup somewhere yeah. for a kid and then just wait to maybe get a chance. Yeah, no, no. Not, not when you've been with the same franchise yeah, the whole, your tough. whole career. Look, if I'm bringing you out of retirement, I need you to come in a ball, dog. Yeah, exactly. Um, NFL tight end Foster Moreau was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma following a physical conducted by the Saints. He's 25 years old. I mean, this is good Good on the, on the it's, training it, staff. Look, it's, aw- it's awful that he has it. And Foster, man, prayers sent, like everybody here, here, uh, but I'm glad they found it. Yeah. I'm glad they found it so now he can go handle business, which I which I know he will. He's going to go fight it. Uh, but again, you know, what, what if he wouldn't have got it? Like, like, this is one of the benefits, and we always talk about, you know, we, we read the epic will out all the time. You know, like, you, you need a will, you need to do these things. This is why taking care of yourself, and, and it's he's so fortunate to be, you know, his occupation where that's a huge part of it is, is your physical health. Sure. Like, you're not sitting there answering calls for OnStar, okay? Uh, you're, you've got to go out there and perform physically. So I'm glad they found it so now he can go beat it. Foster, go beat it, man. Yeah, no doubt. All right, the, the Jets trade uh, Elijah Moore to the Browns and then simultaneously pick up free agent and former chief uh, McCole Hardman. Do you like this pickup for the Jets? Here's, this is when it's hard because you're not in the building. Remember last year, Elijah Moore sat out a couple games because he wasn't getting the ball as a young guy. Like, exactly. He hadn't earned anything. Is this something where they think he's going to be a problem? Maybe they may be getting Aaron Rodgers, and they don't want somebody like Elijah Moore to you know, start a rift in between hmm. him and Aaron Rodgers. I'm not in that building, so I don't know. But I do know you traded one player to get basically the exact same player. Hmm. Now, McCole Hardman is injury prone. But they're in, in reality, that they both do can do similar things. Now, uh, McColl gets used a little bit more on special teams, but I mean, they're both guys that that are, are true slot guys, are true, you know, kind of kind of Swiss Army knife guys. Elijah Moore can play on the outside. He he did some things, uh, you know, in the route tree that we've seen. But there isn't a huge difference between these guys, other than one's played on a team that's won a Super Bowl, so he knows what it takes. Another one was complaining two years into the league after they haven't accomplished anything. Yeah. 
I wonder if that has something to do with it. What are your thoughts? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to what you said, Jake, when it comes to the locker room. I do think this is a downgrade if you compare player to player to Elijah Moore. Just on what they do on the field? Yeah. I do think Elijah Moore is a more a versatile player when it comes to receiver. I mean, Nicole Harmon's obviously a speed guy. He's a straight line guy. That's fine. But Elijah Moore can go inside, outside. can come out of the backfield a little bit, too. So, if anything, the Jets, this has to be an attitude thing. It has to be an attitude right? thing. Right. Elijah Moore's a better player than Nicole Harmon. I really, I, I, if you really run back to tape, he's a better player. Than gotcha. All right, last two here. Armando Baycott is yeah. returning for his fifth season at North Carolina. This was huge news when he re- decided to return this past season. Obviously, North Carolina did not live up to expectations or even make the tournament. What do you think? Fifth year at North Carolina for Armando Baycott. Well, I mean, it's it's good for North Carolina. I mean, that's why it was so shocking that they disappointed this year with not just Baycott coming back, but, uh, you know, Caleb Love and R.J. Davis and Leaky, Leaky Black, Black and all those guys. I will never... I will never disrespect somebody for returning to the school that they've been to have another opportunity to play. I will not do that. Now, I thought he was going to transfer somewhere else. You know, because again, every relationship runs its course, but it's good for North Carolina. You got a guy with experience, a guy that's able to handle the front court down low. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, It is always good to return experience because look, Baycott's a, a really good player. He's a really good player. I mean, look at that thing. He has a rebounding record uh, in North Carolina. He's getting close to it. Uh, it's it's big for Hubert Davis because you do have continuity, even though it seems continuity wasn't a good thing for you this year. So maybe returning one guy, maybe two guys is good off this team. But I do think some need to kind of go out the pasture, per se. North Carolina, better season next year? Obviously. <laughs> has to be, right? I would think, but I, I mean, know. I just don't like it's. I don't know like what happened this year. Yeah, it's just it's one of the it's freakiest stories in college basketball. A team that that made that run in the tournament and played a good season to come here and go to the NIT with all the same basic players except Peru. I mean, I guess we really don't know how important that kid was. Bradley Manic. Yeah, man, the Manic, and now he's gone. The he Geico did, commercial. Guy. Yeah, he did hit some big shots, but good for Armando Baycott. Um, I feel like this is not a bad thing for him. I thought he was going to transfer as well. He ends up staying. But, I mean, this North Carolina team, I mean, it's a real split situation. You don't Did, know who you're going to yeah. get day in and day out. Did you see the Kirk Carissa from uh, Arizona's transfer and led the Pac-12 in assists, 37% free throw shooter? I know a spot you'd be good at. Please! I know a Please. spot. Please. Alabama. Here. No. It's in the state. It's in the state, Alabama. No. You're close. Y'all got enough good things going yeah. on. Yeah. Who's y'all? Okay. So I'm, I'm married in now, so yeah, yeah. No, it is y'all. Like, yes. it's, it's, you got the yeah. <laughs> uh, um, All right, last one. I have to show you guys this softball play here. Oh, this is Did nuts. you guys see this? Yeah, this softball? I'm still trying to figure out if this is 100% real like, and it, how someone could fall for this. I, okay, so if you're on audio, you need to go to YouTube or Daily Wire Plus to, to watch this. This is, this is a softball game, like pretty high level. Let's go ahead and play the clip. I have never... Seen this? This is like something off bench warmers, like the movie. <laughs> it is. Like let's let's play this actual softball game. Here we go. Got the pitch, line drive up the middle. All right, girl, second base. They're sending her. She's gonna get hosed. She dives and misses, and now she stops. And they face each other, and she points. And she the catcher the other way. You can't fall for that. How do you man? fall for that? Like if you're on audio, the runner missed. Like dodge the tag at home plate. The catcher and the runner are in a just old-fashioned showdown, man. Old-fashioned showdown. They're facing each other. The catcher's on the plate. The runner points like the cops just showed up to a high school party. <laughs> and the catcher turns and looks, and she dives, and she's Look saved. at this. Look at this. How does this work? What are you doing? Where's bad your, look for women's Where's sports. your parents? I mean, yeah, I blame your parents. Where's your parents? I blame dad? your parents where's 100%. Where's your dad? I mean, look. Well, you got to think. Remember, this happened almost happened to Major League Baseball with Javier Baez. Running to first and running back to home, and then the dude freaks out at first. He runs back to first and becomes safe. Yeah, but that's different. You look. You felt. You for remember? The... I don't know if y'all remember this video. There's one on ones, O line, D line. This dude's D line's going at him. He hits the kid with a pump fake. Yeah, I remember the kid that. jumps up in the air and blocks it. He gets to the bag. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't right know what's going fake. on, but that's just like. That it almost makes me think there's no way that's legitimate. Like, but it's she turned season. around, Jake. She turned around. If you're a parent, off what of you, a point, David, like, if you're you a parent looking? and that's your daughter after that game, what do you say? You're homeschooled from now on. What do you say? What do you tell her? I love you. Did we fail? But we have to go over some rules. <laughs> Did uh, we on, fail? As on, no, here's what I do. I, I sit. I sit 
You're, you're the child, David. Mm -hmm. You're the child. I'll sit, sit her down. Hey, okay. listen. Hillary. Hillary. I'm Hillary. Because that's probably her name. I just want to apologize to you as your parent for raising somebody who is obviously unbelievably naive and gullible. <laughs> you have embarrassed not only me, but generations before you. Give me your keys. You're not driving anymore. And I just, we're just going to marry you off. All right, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> marry you off. Yeah. No, it's... What? How do you fall for that? I don't know. I don't know. My You're buddy, old enough not to fall for that. And it my doesn't buddy, matter uh, if there's another runner on base. No. Okay. What, what, no. You're what, you mean? what are you trying to You're going to get her out. You, you have to get her out. Yeah. <laughs> my buddy David Jones got me one time, and it was a scrimmage. We're on the same team, so we're yeah. scrimmaging one yeah. time. And he was on third base, and it, we got the second out of the inning, and he like he acts madly. He started like, ah, oh, man, inning's over. Starts like walking towards home plate to like pick up the bat. And I'm, I'm on the mound pitching. I'm like, David, it's... That's that's only the second out. Well, he starts sprinting. Oh he's halfway gosh. to try and squeeze home, and so by the time I throw it, he's safe. Now it wasn't a game because I would have I would have yeah. we had, but he got me. Quick story: we're me. playing in a like big this is a big time travel ball, like 12, 13 years old. Before we bring Luga Bill in here, we're playing an East Cobb team. If you know anything about travel baseball in East Cobb, like that, that's about as high as it gets, and we're winning. All right, we have the winning runner runner on third. I'm at the plate. All right. Our, uh, the pitcher's on the mound, he comes, he's uh, still in the stretch. Like Typically, some guys are getting the wind up when there's a runner on yeah. third base. Mm -hmm. So uh, our, our head coach is the third base coach. He whispers something to the runner. The runner takes two steps, and right when the guy's in the stretch before he pitches, our third base coach yells, go! And the guy goes, on the mound, and balks. balks. And we send the run home, and we win. Over. Their parents were going nuts, dog. Like the umpires had to sprint out. Like their coach smashed wow. his glasses. Brilliant move. Yeah, brilliant. Love move. it. A win's a win. Win's I, a the win. Only time I got got in baseball. Congrats, you're stupid. In front of the teams, when the coach, I think it's my freshman year, I told me to go get the keys to the batter batter's box. Yeah, I mean that's just yeah. I look like go get the left-handed fungus. I look for like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, this guy, this next guy we're bringing on puts the fun in fungo. Uh, Tom Luganville. Lugs, what's up, man? You looked for 15 dude. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Dude. People don't forget. Hey, Cole, I will say this. Just listening to the story of what just happened and transpired in that softball game, which is absolutely hysterical. The football equivalent to this, though, is the quarterback pump fake 10 yards downfield. It doesn't matter where you do the pump fake, the Ooh. defender's going to leave their feet. Yeah. For sure. It does not matter. <laughs> That's they so true. don't know that you can't throw it. It's a reactive, it's a reactive mm -hmm. uh, movement, and it's, it's essentially the same thing. On the back pedal sometimes. Sometimes you'll get the, the pump fake on the back, back pedal. pedal. Yeah. Like, that would be an oh, automatic yeah. pick, you know? Well, it's, and then you have guys like Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger we were talking about earlier that can literally pump fake the full motion of the ball. Like, it, like the same. Because their hands are so big. They're so huge. you got those big caveman hands. So that's what Stevie Brown told us. I played with Stevie at Michigan. He played for the Giants, and we asked him. We said, Who, who's the toughest quarterback to play against, thinking Peyton Manning and Tom Brady? Are the obvious answers. He said Ben Roethlisberger for that very reason because he can do a full motion pump fake at any time and you have to leave your spot. Yeah, which by the way, Jabari yeah. Rice from Texas has the best pump fake in college basketball. Like that dude's, I, it fools me. Uh, and I'm sitting on the couch watching. But Tom, what's, what's worse? I know what's worse, but just as a football guy, like which is worse? What, what just happened in that softball clip or when everybody on the planet knows that you are hard counting on fourth and three, and like you, they run up to the line, there's like 20 seconds to go, like, hit it, hit it, hit it. And then they don't run it, and then all of a sudden they do it again, hit it, hit it. And it's like going under five seconds, and then the guy jumps. Oh, man. Like, that's, oh, that's, that's so worst. egregious. <laughs> like, that it makes me cringe. It's mm. almost cringy. Absolutely. That's worse. I think that's worse. Yeah, I, I agree. But all right, uh, I want to ask you about this. You know, we, we're doing our spring roundup. Uh, we hit Texas. Okay. We hit Oregon. We hit Auburn today. Yesterday, we hit Florida State. We hit LSU. And who else am I forgetting yesterday that we hit? Notre Dame. Notre, Notre Dame. Dame it's Notre Dame. Um, it's I want to ask. Dame. <laughs> yeah, it's Notre Dame. It's, it's Notre Dame. Um, Cam Newton threw at Auburn's Pro Day. And I've seen this all over Twitter. Why is Cam Newton not starting in the NFL? I think I know why, but why does Tom Luganville think that Cam Newton is no longer in the NFL in general? I got to be honest with you. I think it's because he's wildly erratic. He's inaccurate. And whether people want to admit it or not or acknowledge it or not, no, I, don't, I, don't, I think people are tired of dealing with everything that comes around with him. 
And unless you're going to be an absolute dominant player week in and week out and be a feature player that can be counted on and relied upon through consistency of performance, they're willing to deal with all the other junk if you're mm-hmm. that guy. But that's not what Cam Newton is. And by the way, I don't know about you, that pro day was not for Cam Newton. That pro day is for athletes trying to move on. They made that thing all about a guy that's already had his NFL moment. What about those Auburn players that are looking to play professional football, looking to move on, looking to have an opportunity to be seen? That whole thing turned into a Cam Newton circus. It was all about him. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the one or two Auburn players that may make the NFL off that team. But, Tom, my, my, my thing is, it, when I look at it, I, I think there's a concussion problem with Cam Newton. I don't think anybody's talking about it. I think Cam Newton has a legitimate concussion problem. Now, I'm not a doctor, all right? I'm, I'm not going to claim to be. Uh, there's a lot of people that do, including one guy. I'm not going to say his name, but you know who he is. But when I look at Cam Newton and, and that issue, and I'm the only one that believes it, you would have think someone would have at least given him a flyer. I mean, the Texans are out there with Davis Mills. You've got, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it just, somebody would, I just find it, there's got to be something. It's either what you said or it's that concussion issue. Because again, you can't not, maybe. Perf- yeah, you can't not perform and be a distraction. Like those, those two things, are just, that's the kiss of death. That's a terminal illness for a football team. But I do want to move uh, into the, the, the college realm. Which first year coach? This year, do you think will have the most success? I know, I know. There's a bunch sprinkled around the country, but is there one that whether whether it is Hugh Freeze, whether it is Deion Sanders, uh, you know, regardless, uh, is there a first year coach that you're looking at to say, hey, man, this guy could really burst on the scene? Because Tom, we've seen first year coaches come in and be able to kind of backdoor people. Luke Fickle at Wisconsin, okay, I, I think is a, is a pretty safe bet, and I think it's interesting too because for the first time and maybe ever, certainly. Our gener- my generation, your generation, we're going to see a spread offense in Madison. I know. Phil Longo. Longo's there. Yeah. We've got t- uh, Tanner Mordecai comes over from SMU. It's going to be an entirely different look. You know they're going to be sound on defense. I think the long-term question is, does Wisconsin have the ability through recruiting to attract the type of athletes you're going to have to have mm-hmm. to play in that scheme? Mm-hmm. I think there's a reason why they have not been that type of team, right? And so Luke Fickle, to me, is rolling the dice a little bit here. Uh, But he probably has found himself in the best inherited position, maybe potentially, um, and made some good hires. So I think he's got a chance, and especially with the Big Ten West being the the mess that it is. I I think he put himself uh, securely in the driver's seat uh, to to be very, very successful. Now, I I don't want to downgrade him. But I don't think people realize how bad Colorado's roster is, mm. right? And uh, Dion's going to infuse uh, discipline, integrity, enthusiasm, energy, and all of those things. But guess what he can't do? He can't step foot on that field. Mm-hmm. And some of the guys that they took through the transfer portal, some of those guys are group of five level players. They don't make Colorado any better. Now, a couple of them, like his son, like Travis Hunter, all right? There are some guys there that are, that are going to improve that roster, but I think that's a much longer rebuild than people think it is. Yeah, and uh, look, it, at Jackson State, he's playing with a stacked deck. I mean, you go from playing yeah. with a stacked deck against everybody else to now you yeah. have to find other ways to win outside of, of just, you know, doing the norm and having better players than them. So that's, but I do love the staff he's surrounded him with, man. Getting Sean Lewis from Kent State. I love what he does offensively. I I love his aggressiveness on the offensive side. I think think Dion is smart enough to know you can't just prime time your way through power five college football. You need a staff around you that you can lean on because it's not just about one guy. That's what I'm just saying. And they just hired Sal Sunseri, too. Yes. He's been a long-time successful defensive line yes. coach. Yes. Son, son was, was a hell of a player, national too. championships. Yeah, son was a great player. His other son's the offensive coordinator, James Madison, now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a big hire. I think he's done well with the staff. I think the question also, not to get on a Colorado topic here, is is the university going to finally push all their chips to the table and – Start allowing admissions to do what admissions needs to do if you want to be good in football. Okay, let's call it what it is because they have not been willing to do that previously. Yeah. And if they don't change their transfer portal rules and they don't change their incoming admission standard, then they're gonna they're gonna have a hard time. 
Yeah, I, I would be shocked if they didn't after Dion took the job because he's even talked about that being a huge point. I think he knew something before he took that job. Um, Hope he got it in writing. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> that's a good point. Tom, I want to get your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. I'm very conflicted on him. On one hand, I think he's the most accurate passer of the football that I've ever seen. His teammates really, over the years, have seemed to love him and say great things about him. On the other hand, Aaron Rodgers seems to create distractions and bring attention to himself in a negative way, so much so that a franchise like Green Bay, you know, for the most part, has even said, hey, we're ready to move on from this guy. There's a lot of speculation. He may be a New York Jet here. Uh, at, at any time, really. How do you think this situation could play out, and what are your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? Listen, I think, uh, you know, some of the topics we were discussing with Cam Newton don't apply to Aaron Rodgers. Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers is a flat-out football player consistently, sure. all the time, um, and has done it when you take away weapons from him, too. I don't know if you guys have seen that, that reel that's gone across the Internet mm -hmm. of dropped balls in this past fall with Green Bay that he just dropped into a bucket on mm -hmm. multiple occasions. Drops, drops, yeah. drops. I mean, so, you know, listen, there's plenty of blame to go around when things don't go well, but I think he is, I think he's one of the most purest passers of the football that the NFL has ever seen. And when I mean pure, I mean just everything is smooth, effortless, flick of the wrist. He can alter his arm angle, he can throw off platform. And everything looks like it's easy, right? Yeah. And it still does, even though he's about to be, I think, 30, what, 39 years old. Mm -hmm. And so, listen, I, I think if he put it this way, here's my thoughts on him. If you're willing to go to New York, where they have tried every single way to either screw up the franchise or enhance the franchise and still screw it up, and you're willing to go there because you want to play football so badly and you think if they put the right pieces of the puzzle together – that they could have a championship football team, that tells you how much he still loves yeah. competing and how much he still loves football. Are there guys that are going to be assholes? Yeah, <laughs> that's part of the position too. Yeah, I think you got to have some of that stuff, right? Um, whatever it is off the field, on the field, in the locker room, in the organization's building, I don't know. I don't really care. All I know is he produces. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's what I would be putting at the top of the list. Of above everything else with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Packers had more drops than a Visine factory last year, man. Right. Starting with Christian Watson <laughs> on that deep ball at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Remember that? I do first throw. He did improve. Throw. Christian Watson was it the, he balled did at the end. Rogers. I'm not saying he yeah, didn't, but sure. look, that's just that kind of started the yeah. train in my yeah, opinion. You see Aaron's face What's after we, that first All throw? these drops. Oh, and that's part. Yeah, of course I saw And Lazar's going to the Jets. All these drops and Lazar's going to the Jets. By the way, yeah. one other thing, too. I want to see if you guys have looked at this. You can go on the internet. There has never been an adult quarterback, an adult quarterback. When I say an adult, post-college, right? Okay. And we talk about technical stuff and fundamentals and release points and how we carry and hold the ball and blah, blah, blah. I have never seen an adult quarterback completely alter how he carries the ball and delivers the football post-college than Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Go on the internet and Google Aaron Rodgers Cal. Go to Images. And look at how he holds and carries the football. Is that higher? There's literally a picture. He's literally like this. Yeah. He looks like a waiter that is carrying <laughs> a tray of food on his shoulder. Then Google Aaron Rodgers at Green Bay. The ball's down here yeah. nice and loose. Ball comes out. Completely. Yep. And he did that. All I mean, you can do that with 13, 14, 15-year-olds. You're not doing that with 23-year-olds, right? Tom, that, that's amazing how he altered him, himself you know, as a passer. One thing that helped that is sitting behind Brett Favre for four seasons. We don't see that a lot anymore. You know, so many guys right. are getting drafted right away. And it's like, hey, you have to come in and perform. You have to be the starter immediately. Even in a situation in, in San Francisco when Brock Purdy's the last pick of the draft, finds himself having to start in an NFC championship yeah. game. Sitting behind Brett Favre, I think, allowed him to do some things to better himself. That, that you know gets into the draft here coming up soon, which I know we're going to have you back on before the draft starts. Is what should some of these uh, teams do in terms of having drafting a young quarterback, taking a chance, and having him sit behind an older guy? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Again, look it, on on job experience is it's again the unteachable intangible. Yeah. All right, Lou, yep. we're going to the booster club. You ready for this? All right. All sure. right, let's go. Texas said he wants to know. You kind of hit this earlier, but I do like this little conversation right here. Which Big Ten West head coach wins their side first? Matt Rule. Mm -hmm. Or Luke Fickle? Mm. Mm. That's an easy one. Luke Fickle. I yeah. think so, too. God, I'm just not believing in Matt. Okay, unless, unless we take Lincoln, Nebraska, 
and uproot it <laughs> yeah. and put it in, let's just say, <laughs> uh, Louisiana. Tupelo, Mississippi. <laughs> hey, Tupelo. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We got family at Tupelo. Yes, sir. We'll help them move. Access we know how to, to get players. there. All right, let's go to M. Hunt. He wants to know, how does the Big Ten reorganize after USC and UCLA join the conference? As far as, like... I think taking away divisions. divisions yeah. Like I think we're going... I don't think we're going to have divisions in college football within the next three to five years. I, I uh, in agree. Any I, I think... Yeah. I think eventually that's where we're going to get to. The, the question, or the answer to that question, is largely going to revolve around, and this is going to sound silly, it's going to revolve around travel and proximity yeah. and not just related to football, right? I mean, when you think about this, how are you going to make, are you going to make consistently make SC and UCLA go to Rutgers and Maryland and play a noon kick? Or are you going to consistently have them go to Minneapolis? Or are you going to have them go to Bloomington? Where are you taking them and how often are you doing it? And what time of the year are you doing it? So, for example, if you're SC or UCLA, do you want to be playing at Minnesota or Wisconsin in November? <laughs> yeah. Woo. I mean, think, that's I mean, a different so world than what y'all been playing it's a whole, in. Whole different world. Say, this this ain't Tucson, <laughs> right? And you're also going from a non line of scrimmage league to a line of scrimmage, scrimmage league. league. Yeah. Now you add cold weather elements, time zone changes. It's going to be interesting to see how travel and, and logistics, proximity to teams, have an impact on what they do with those yeah. two schedules going. Yeah, forward. go up to Iowa City in November. See how see how that works <laughs> out for you. Um, yeah, you know no what? Kidding. What I find what I what I find the craziest is not even the football element because you play le less games in football than sure. any other sport. Think about basketball. basketball. Yeah. That travel yeah. is going to be stupid. That's Baseball. Why I still think, that travel is going to be stupid. That's why I still yeah. think I'm looking at Oregon and Washington. What are those schools? Did they try and add a more west? They're building a bridge. Presence. You got to build a bridge, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. what they're doing. You, um, that, that's what it looks like to me. I mean, we're not going to Terabithia, but it still looks like they're they're building a bridge. <laughs> most in question, uh, most important question you've probably heard in a while, Luke's. What's the best way to cut your sandwich? Diagonally, all right, or halving it, or no cut so at I all? I think you have to. I, I personally will go no cut at all, mm -hmm. but I think it all depends on whether you're worried about getting a little stuff right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. if you go diagonally, you can start with either corner. Yeah, and there you're you in go. The clear. See, it's easier. If you go <laughs> with the square. Now you're you're looking at you need a napkin after mm -hmm. every bite. Th there is oh. nothing this man Smart. cannot take down. That's what we that's went from smart. Aaron Rodgers to Cam Newton to the Big Ten West mm -hmm. to How to Cut Your Sandwich. All fantastic content from our buddy Tom Luganbill, sideline analyst, <laughs> ESPN. You can find him everywhere. Uh, does a fantastic job. Ex every just turn on the TV, you'll see Tom Luganbill, one of our favorites. Uh, Lugs, it's always great catching up with you, my friend. All right, guys, have a great one. Hey, Thanks, you as well. UC Report, that's a pretty dope shirt as well. Check it out. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> that's right. See ya. All right, all right Tom Luganville, one of our favorites. Let's get to trivia, Cone. Oh, trivia. Trivia. Got trivia Let's in get the trivia booth today? In here. Oh, yeah, we got trivia. Oh, yeah. Trivia. Okay. Nice. Let's do it. We've been just absolutely rope-a-doping rope y'all on these lately. I feel like you guys didn't get it last week, but I'll, I'll let it slide. No, um, revisionist history. No. Oh, you know, okay. when you write the history, the... I think know. we hit the under last week, too, on Flaming Dragon. We did. That was a great <laughs> job by you. Don't no, worry. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we tomorrow we ride at dawn. Tomorrow we ride at dawn. That's exactly right. Six and a half. All right. This trivia is from Texas Ed. Ooh, okay. Ed. He said, right. "Howdy, y'all." Howdy, howdy, howdy to you, Texas Ed. The state of California has the most quarterback recruits that have started and won a Super Bowl with five recruits. Name all five. You have, have one minute. Started and started won a Super Bowl. Go. Okay. The most five star recruits? No, no, no. just the, the oh, most recruits who have started and won a There's Super just Bowl. Five of them Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rogers, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Um who yep. else is from Let's out there? Joe Montana from California. Ooh, he went to Notre went Dame. Went to Notre Dame. I don't know. Uh, what about Kurt? Warner? Yeah. I don't know where he's from. Let's go. Oh, he went to Northern Iowa. I don't know where he's from. Yeah. Uh um. Think about Carson Palmer. Palmer didn't win one. No. Matt Liner didn't Trent win Dilfer, one. Trent Dilfer, is he from California? I don't know. Give me, I think Trent Dilfer's from California. Put Trent in there. Put Trent Dilfer in there. Are um, you saying it? Yes. Correct. Nice! nice. All right, we got two, two more. more I want 23 seconds. Um, um, Super Bowl winners, Super Bowl winners, Super Bowl winners. You said Tom Brady, Matt Stafford's from Georgia. Um, he's from Texas. From Texas. But Brisbane. so is Patrick Mahomes. Where's uh, Big Ben from? 
No. Big Ben's from Ohio. I think. Ohio, because um, uh, he went to Miami, Ohio. We just got to say two. Say two teams that won it. Uh, Troy Aikman. Troy, Troy Aikman and no. Joe Montana. Sorry, boys. Jim what, what? Plunkett and John Elway. John Elway. Elway. Oh, Elway. Jim Plunkett, Elway. I can understand missing. John Elway's unforgivable. John Elway. I, know, I need more from you. I didn't think I didn't think he was from us. Uh, where was where was John Elway, Elway from in California? I, I Granada Hills. Granada uh, Hills. God, he was in Granada. Trent Dilfer, though, nice pick. Thanks, man. I would have gotten one that I didn't one. Think you guys would get so. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that one. Pretty um, excited about John Elway. God, that pisses me off. John and Elway. There's always one out there that's obvious. There, yep. God, what do we got in the baseball club for? All right, let's get to some donations. Okay, well, I missed one of those from earlier today. It was a five dollar donation. It was about soccer. It got five point six million views, and it's an average of four. I think. Some Mexican soccer got 5.6 million views, and it averages four and a half. I was going to a little tard that could, the $2 donation. How many wins do the Gators get next year? Florida? Yeah. Let's pull up the schedule. Let me, let me bring this bad boy up. Billy Napier, year two. Running back like a running back. All right. Putting it up, scanning the internet. Thanks, Elon. Somebody gets it before me. Tell me. Uh, uh, hold on. I got to pull it pulled up. Oh, I forgot about that Utah game. Uh-oh. Let's see. 2023 football schedule. Here we go. Here's who Florida's got. You got Utah on the road. That's a loss. McNeese State. It's a win. Tennessee at home. Loss. You trust Joe Milton? I don't know if I trust that cat. I'll tell you right now. I'll give him a, I'll say loss. I'll say loss. So you're one and two. Charlotte at home. Two and two. At Kentucky. At Kentucky? Loss. Loss. Two and three. First Vanderbilt win. Three and three. At South Carolina. Lost three and four. Georgia. Why are we going over Vandy just like Jacksonville? Just lost easy. three and five. Arkansas at home. Loss. Wins. Was KJ Jefferson coming back? Loss. Win. I'm going loss. Loss. Uh, at LSU. Swap, loss. At Missouri. Loss. Loss. Win. God, is Florida going three and nine next no, year? I got five at least. Five? Where's the five? Where's the five? I've David? got five. Missouri. I've got Missouri, Missouri at home the against Arkansas in the swamp. We got Vanderbilt. And Charlotte and what was McNeese? The, McNeese. Mm, they'll win the orange and blue game. And maybe may, I don't know. Maybe they'll tie it. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's woo. And maybe and maybe. And just, I want to believe you just in Billy. Pray, and every you just quarter pray that Joe Milton, J- Joe Milton just overthrows every pass in the game. He'll do that. Yeah, I don't know if you got to pray for that. He'll do that. Who's going to uh, be the quarterback for Florida? The, I think it's going to be O'Boy who played in the bowl game. I don't think Graham Mertz, who left Wisconsin, who can't throw it from me to Cones. It's just, if, if Graham, Graham Mertz, Mertz starts, I want to redo my picks. Yeah, I'm going three and nine. I, I will, I will we'll pick see. three and Look, nine. Look, Florida's going to have guys running around. For sure. For you sure. know, they're going to win games. All right, bets. Last night, I'm going to tell everybody associated with the Cincinnati Bearcat program. That you love I'm them. so glad y'all lost in the playoff. I'm so glad after what y'all did to me last night. After what y'all did, it brings me blossoming personal joy that you guys got stomped by Bama running bread and butter spring plays in the playoff. That wasn't even this past year. No, yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah. I hope it still hurts. Like I'll never Jane. let it go. Here's a, no, hell no. This ain't frozen. I look like L's at you. Got Here's it. what I got tonight. We're going super big parlays because Cincinnati, only good thing about that, Skyline Chili didn't come through for me last night. Shout out Charlotte and Eastern. You know what makes it even worse? <clears throat> I had Eastern Kentucky plus six and a half and the over at 138. Our Charlotte money line and the over Eastern Kentucky, Charlotte, 138. Mm-hmm. Man, they combined to score 139 points and Charlotte won. Mm. All I needed is Cincinnati to win. There's always one. Mm. There's always so one. So here's what I got tonight. FAU plus five. That's right. I already told you. Hashtag believe. Add that with K-State plus one and a half and UCLA money line. And that's plus 544, baby. And then the second one, give me FAU Tennessee over 129. I think it's going to be a little bit faster of a pace. They're not going to be able to mm-hmm. just, you know, soup, slow down uh, FAU the whole game. Then give me Zags UCLA under 145 and a half. I think UCLA, UCLA is going to slow this down, make uh, Gonzaga be efficient from the perimeter, which they struggle to do consistently. And then Arkansas and UConn. Guys, went back and forth on this one. The over-under. It's it's a tough deal. I'm going to take the over at 139 because I'm banking on Hawkins to play good and Nick Smith Jr. to show up. I'm feeling maybe a 73-71 game, hitting that over. That one's going off at plus 595. We hit both of these, and we're right back in it. 
<laughs> oh, hey. Sorry. You, right? you, 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 you go ahead. Right, Are you sure? You yeah. okay, bud? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, give me. A little 2-0 yesterday. <laughs> we'll take that. Needed that. All right, a little big parlay for you. A little four-teamer right here. All right, give me Kansas State money line. I'm right, giving the Arkansas UConn over at 139 and a half. Come on, boys. Let's be some playmakers and score some points. Give me Tennessee money line. Let's go. Defense, defense, defense. And give me the Zags UCLA over 145 <laughs> and a half. I like it. Plus, I like plus it. 973. This wow. is a month maker. It's a month give maker. Give me the Nets plus four. Giants. <laughs> oh, I like it. All right. All right I'm hedging a lot of things here. Like I said, I'm in this bracket buster challenge where basically you pick five teams from each region and the number of games they win, you get a point. You get the points that they're Is this seeded. with Brad? Is this Brad's? Brad's brother. Man, I forgot Brad's to brother. do it. With Brad's brother. So the strategy Sorry, was, Brad. look, like I picked Michigan State, right? They're a seven seed. If they win one game in the tournament, which I thought they would beat USC, you get more points than if Purdue from that region wins, all, goes all the way to the championship, exactly. right? So that's how you, that's how this thing has worked out. So I'm hedging a lot of things here because I need to pull from Michigan State tonight, but also Arkansas over there as an eight seed. I'm going to go ahead and take Arkansas money line, yeah. even though I look, I, I'm big on UConn. Arkansas money line plus 165. That's good odds right there for a team that's supposed to have two picks in the first seven of the NBA draft. And then I'm going to take Tennessee money line and I'm going to pair it with the under. At 139 and a half, and that's minus 120. All right. Love it. Baby Cone. Ace Cone. It's been absolutely on fire. He's gonna take Yukon money line and the and over 130 and a half on the alternate line. That's minus 110. Then he's gonna take Gonzaga money line. Ooh, Zag. Plus 105. Cobras, the Cobras. Zags. All right, Booster Club. Wyoming doesn't exist. Wants to know. Does it, you, it really get, doesn't? No, I don't think so. It's not a real place. You don't okay. exist. Could UConn win it all? Appreciate yes. This is first time jumping in for I'm going to tell you guys, yes. any, yeah, appreciate you jumping in. I think any of these teams can win it. I, I mean, I, I really do. I, I really, I mean, again, t- explain to me how a team couldn't win it. That's my, in this tournament. I could tell you COVID. past tournaments why a team couldn't win it. Like, it, this one, I could, con- like, maybe it's better to put it this way. I could convince you that any team could win it when I explained it to you. I could convince you. you and it could be man. logical without me having to do some carnival act. Let's go to Connie or Ron. Napier might get fired on the spot if Vandy uh, beats the Gators in the swamp. Uh, didn't they beat him last year? Yeah. You can't lose twice in a row to Vandy. Not in football. No, Not in you, football. The, there, will, there will be an interim. Boys. There would be an interim. Yeah. After that. Yeah, it would be. Look, I, 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 look over. T- I think Billy needs enough time. I hope Fordham does well because I do think it was a good hire. Um, but man, that game, you go win at Utah though. Talk about flipping the script. Mm-hmm. Getting a little confidence? We'll see. Cam, Cam rising. rising dark, coming back? Yeah, dark Cam rising. We'll, we'll see. Let's go to Maximum Vol. It says, hashtag ask Crane to come. Is hype train a good call sign? Also, big trust in Joe Milton. Yeah, okay. Hype tra- I love hype train. It hasn't been taken yet. Uh, w- y'all know we do call-ins Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're going to have them tomorrow on Flame and Dragon Friday. When you call in, we need your call sign. Once you're call- you have your call sign, nobody else can use it. All right, we're keeping keeping a list of these. All right, so when you call in or you can say in the chat what your call sign is, we'll make sure we get that put in there. Love it. All right, let's go to Kyle Frick. He says, if Marcus Freeman doesn't take Notre Dame back to glory, how long does he last? Does a lack of success propel Notre Dame to finally join a conference or will be more likely they stay independent? Well, Kelly Clarkson action. Here's my here's my question, Kyle. What, what, what do we mean back to glory? Are we talking like back like in the 70s? Are we talking about like y'all making the playoff? I ain't seen a lot of glory with Notre Dame here lately. So I think Mark, if Marcus can get you guys, which I think he can, because the difference, I think he can turn Notre Dame into a physical powerhouse again. Mm-hmm. That was their problem. You know, when they'd run up against Bama or one of these teams, they'd just get smushed. Just science, anatomy, physics. I yeah. think Marcus Freeman can do it. But I get it, though, being a Notre Dame fan, there is one standard. It's a national championship. So, and I don't think you just forget about history, even though it's 40 or 50 years old. But I think we got to make sure we don't put the cart before the horse. Let Marcus get y'all back to the playoff and be able to compete up front and then go snatch that bad boy. But you hired the right guy, in my opinion. I think so, too. And if, if, if we're only talking about national championships, then, yeah, you hadn't done that since, what, Lou Holtz in the late yeah. 80s, 88, something like yeah. that. But it's still, they multiple yeah. national championship appearances, multiple playoff appearances in the last decade. Mm-hmm. That's good. I mean, that's better than a lot of teams out there. Yeah, We all know Rudy was offsides. Yep, he um, was offsides. Let's go to DK Denora real quick. 
Uh, then we'll get to the poll hashtags. He wants to know, ask Crane and Company, what should the Cincinnati Bengals do with their running back situation? I don't want to hear the word Bijan. Right no, y'all can answer that question. Bijan. Well, look, I, I don't know. Bijan Bijan may end up at the Eagles, dog. Let that happen. You get Bijan and Jalen Hurts? Well, they that RPO? After. They pick after, don't they? Or do they have a pick? Do, no, they pick before they Cincinnati. They got the Saints pick. They? they do have the Saints pick. Yeah. But that's what we were talking about. It's in between. So you'd have to go get him at like, what is it, 10? Would you take a running back in the top 10? Do you take a running back in the top 10? It's the DNs. They got, you know, the only time you take it when you have all the other Smith. Like there's there's anomalies and circumstances. Eagles got everything else. Yeah. Yeah, they have. Then go get him. Go get Nolan Smith. Man, this. And I bet defense. Yeah, they have 10 and 30. They have 10 and 30. Nice. All right, let's get to the poll. All right, what is the best way to cut your sandwich? Cut it in half. Cut it diagonally. Golly. Hey, don't cut it. This is one I don't know. I mean, I'm going to go don't cut it, 58%. Oh, you need to say, cut it. I'm going to say diagonal, 40%. Mm, cut it in half, 19%. Okay. okay. Don't cut it, 38%. Okay. Cut it diagonally, 43%. There we go. Okay. Diagonally. Diagonal. We got corner of the mouth. Like corner of the mouth. Said, don't do cut your sandwiches. Yeah, uh, eat them. Again, if it's for kids, cut. Quit, quit. Yeah, I know. I didn't know we had a bunch of uh, kids in the chat. I thought these were grown ups. I guess not. That's enjoy, that's enjoy backing up into parking spots with you elitist. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I do. And yeah, we appreciate exactly. you guys. Make sure you follow us on all social medias. Appreciate Tom Luganville coming on today. It's Flaming Dragon Friday tomorrow. Hey, go check out the merch. Uh, Real Daily Wire, good originals. You'll find our merch there. Uh, also, keep spreading the word about the show. Really appreciate you guys. Call-ins tomorrow. Get ready. Get that call sign ready. It's going to be a whole hell of a lot of fun. We really enjoy the call-ins. And like the chances of me cutting my sandwich for lunch today, we're going, going. Gone.